Now, let's hear what Dr. Ayodele Oni, partner at Bloomfield Law, has to say about this. Uh, Dr. Oni, good afternoon. So, um, the question now is, why does it seem like the NNPCL um, is being reluctant to offtake petrol from Dangote? Any news? Any background story? Uh, well, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what's happening. It, it, it sounds a bit strange to me, um, unless, of course, they weren't prepared before now. Um, other than that, and, and that shouldn't be the case. Other than that, it's difficult to explain what what the situation may be. But it's also possible to to put forward certain um, um, excuses or explanation. Uh, maybe they haven't reached a compromise on pricing. Maybe some other um, logistics challenges, but 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 if if this has been in the works for a while and conversations have been going on, then we shouldn't be where where we are at the moment, and it'll be difficult to find any explanation. But because I do I do not have all the facts, I cannot say for certain what 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 the reason for this is. And and the scary thing is now uh, the news not yet confirmed that Dangote is saying well they may have to export their petrol and as Dr Muda um, suggested there perhaps the NNPC is still importing so I mean when you look at the whole picture it's you don't it's difficult to understand why we do have a product that is needed in much demand in the country and yet it's being imported while the domestic refiner is exporting. You know, one just wonders if, is it, are there sentiments going on? Because Dangote had already shared a statement to say they are waiting for the NNPC. They had also said, well, as surprising, the Federal Executive Council was supposed to be having meetings to share, to agree on a price, because we do know that the subsidy element is there. You know, so the whole picture, and I think this is why a lot of Nigerians say, just give us information. We want the truth so we understand the real picture of what's going on. Yeah, I, I think um, one, one thing that's been a challenge is in this part of the world is uh, honesty and, and forthrightness. I think if we know what the, the true state of things is, and then it gives more comfort. And we're able to estimate or determine what the challenges are and when those challenges will be over. I'm first a lawyer, so I'll start from what the law says, uh, what the PIA says. The PIA requires that um, there's domestic supply of crude to refiners, those who have licenses, whose licenses are still valid and whose refineries are operational. So um, um, I expect that crude will be sold and then finished products will be available. Um, the only challenge there then is the idea of buying in Naira and then having to sell back in Naira. What are the terms? There's some opaqueness around that. What are the terms? Could they have sold the crude in Naira and given them, him the option to then export uh, I, I, I struggle to see how that might work, particularly within the framework of this DCSO, the domestic crude supply obligation. If there's a domestic supply crude supply obligation, that means you are reserving particular quantity for refining in Nigeria that will be used in Nigeria. Otherwise, if it's to be exported, I mean the petroleum products derived from the crude is to be exported in the first place, then you don't you don't need a DCSO arrangement. You may as well source your crude from elsewhere and then export the finished products derived from that crude. So I think there may be a challenge around the contractual framework or the arrangement such that um, Dangote may actually be tied down to selling that particular crude refine gotten, gotten in Naira from the NNPCL in Nigeria, it may be an obligation to sell in Nigeria, and then logistics and those issues need, need to be dealt with. That's on one hand. On the other hand, you also have to consider the independent marketers. Isn't there an option? And you ask that this is a question, right? You'd ask whether there isn't an option for those other marketers to go buy that um, petroleum product, the PMS in particular, without necessarily waiting for the NNPC. Because the, the spirit of the PIA is to ensure that you have uh, many buyers, many sellers, you, you ultimately end ex, um, import of petroleum products, you do backward integration. The Act specifically mentions that. 
And you know, you would only have a situation where NNPC is even stepping in as supply of last resort where you, you've got um, insufficient quantities of PMS in the market. So I, I think that we need someone to come out and be honest and tell us what, what the true situation of things are and what uh, may be the inhibition as things stand. Is it logistics? When is all of this going to be um, over? Is it in two weeks, in three weeks, you would have um, the PMS at the pumps? You know, so first, um, honesty. And secondly, um, we need to understand what the contractual arrangement is between the NNPCL and, and Dangote. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's just it. Nigerians need to know exactly what's going on. Even if the government wants the people's sympathy and understanding, obviously information has to be out there. And talking about the issue of crude, I don't know, I know the announcement has been made and they were discussing the modalities of selling that crude in Naira. But I wonder if that has started, uh, uh, because we do know that um, even before now, Dangote has had to be importing crude from the country, other local refiners. So it's not just about Dangote. We have the modular refineries too. They are also struggling with domestic uh, crude uh, because the IOCs have their own contracts that have been signed and all of that. So I guess the other uh, factor in all of this would be the availability of crude and the terms of that availability of crude. Yes, um, that, that, that's a good um, question. Um, you know, the law is clear that there's a DCSO, a domestic crew supply obligation. What, however, what the law says, it's on a willing buyer, willing seller arra arrangement. Secondly, there's no obligation to sell in Naira. It's based on what the parties um, decide or negotiate. Yes, the, the, the upstream commission can then step in, you know, uh, but in, in stepping in, they, they need to be cautious. You know, so the law makes those provisions and then allows them, if, if someone is being unreasonable, they can't step in, but there are standards on, on even what that pricing will be. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, there have been a lot of reserves-based lending, forward sale arrangements that predate the PIA. So to the extent that this predate the PIA, I'm sure the upstream commission is being cautious in, in determining, and it, it, it should um, guidelines around um, domestic resupply obligations because um, there must be a process, right? The law just provides a general framework and there's a specifics on how it should be done. You know, so everyone is struggling because IOCs like the NNPC2, which is a national health company, have sold, um, even crude not yet produced. Some have done RBL, some have done forward sales, so that they have limited quantities uh, to make available. But I believe that out of that, the limited quantities, they, there'd be some that should still be available for the domestic market. And a number of these refiners also have oil blocks. I know Aradel does have, and um, I, I'm... A number of them do have uh, uh, blocks and may need to integrate in, in, in this sense. Another thing I think may be a challenge is around pricing and a number of the IOCs having arrangements with traders, you know, and they, they having to tell you to go buy from those traders. I think once you have new laws such as this and new arrangements, you need a period for people to adjust. Now, this is 2024 from 2021. I expect that that adjustment should have taken place now, or should, should, um, should we should be close to a situation where we can have sufficient volumes of crude. But another challenge you, you may not have considered is the fact that the number of um, divestment transactions that the government is yet to grant consent to. Because once people want to sell their assets, you're not going to continue to invest or risk capital in said assets. You've got the Seplat, Exxon, Mobil, You've got the ones for Renaissance and Shell. You know, so once government can grant consent to these transactions, um, the new owners are going to invest in, in, in production. And you'd also have more crude available. If you don't have the crude available, then you don't have it available regardless of the law. Recall. The law cannot command the impossible. Mm. Yeah, well, Dr. Ony, a lot of... Uh issues there to consider and questions left unanswered uh, but thank you so much uh, dr ayodeleoni partner at bloomfield law <music>